Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. You know what I haven't had in a while? We have not had a good skincare update and I think we are well, well overdue. There's a good few reasons why I don't do them so often and a good reason why I haven't done it recently. So one of those reasons is why do companies do this by the way? You will have a product that has been your tried and true, your holy grail. Everybody loves it, it's a cult favorite for no reason, no rhyme or reason at all. The company will be like, you know what? Discontinued, no reason whatsoever or they change the formula. So now it's completely different. It doesn't work for your skin or it's not available at all. And then suddenly you spend all this time trying to find another product that is, is at least comparable in some way to replace that one product that was just so vital in your routine. And that has happened to me so many times. So another good reason for like a gap in between videos because it gives me time to kind of compensate for when a company decides to do the old bait and switch or just pull the rug out from underneath you entirely. I wanna to get to the skincare routine, but before I do that, I want to explain to you what's been going on with my own skin and why I've been kind of running into an issue. So I'm good at troubleshooting issues when it comes to skin. That's kind of, that's my job. Skincare is not only my hobby, but it is my job, it is my career, and it's something that I, I absolutely adore doing. But something that I don't often do is I don't run into a issue where I can't quite get the answer immediately. And when I say immediately, about a week. Now, that's how long it would usually take to troubleshoot my own skin, but we were going on months and I had no idea what the hell was going on with my skin. So let me just update you. So what I was dealing with with my skin was a lot of dehydration. Now, normally my skin is dehydrated and that's not usually an issue for me. I know how to combat that. So really quickly, the difference between dehydrated and dry skin, a lot of people think that they have dry skin, but your skin's actually dehydrated. You can say, oh my God, my skin is so dry. And no matter what you do, no matter how many products you throw at it, it's still like sandpaper or it's dry, it's flaky, it's creasy, creepy. And the reason is you probably have dehydrated skin, not dry skin. And here's the difference. Dry skin is a skin type. Dehydrated skin is a skin condition. Dry skin is lacking in oils and fats and lipids. And dehydrated skin is something that's lacking in water. So, dry skin is lacking in oil, fats, that sort of thing. And dehydrated skin is lacking in water. So what you need to do when you have dehydrated skin, you gotta hit it with the water. So that being said, I had it down to a science, right? That's until other crap started happening. My dehydrated skin got worse, and no matter what I threw at it, it wasn't working. My usual tricks were not working, but not only was it dehydrated, but suddenly I was getting hyperpigmentation, which to me seemed odd because I've always limited my sun exposure, always. Since I was about 15 years old, maybe 14, my sun exposure was very limited, and when I was out in the sun, I always used a really strong SPF. So the concept of getting what was essentially sunspots or hyperpigmentation on my face seemed off to me. Now, things like hyperpigmentation, that's something that normally appears on people's skin around the age of 30. And when I really looked into it and tried to understand the composition of the skin and why that happens, here's the reason. The reason it happens is your hyperpigmentation, these essentially sunspots that are popping up on your face, when you were a kid, spending your days outside playing with your friends in the sunshine, it was highly likely that every two hours your mother was not calling you in the house to slather you in head to toe sunscreen. So you're out there for hours, sometimes until the street lights come on. So you're getting sunburned and everybody remembers being a kid and like, you know, loving to peel your skin whenever you got the sunburn and began to peel. So it was during those times, those sun exposures is when all of that damage was happening and it sits beneath the dermal layer and it takes many years of shedding. So your skin turns over every 28 days. So it takes many, many years and all of a sudden, surprise, 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 surprise. Boom, age 30 comes around and all of that sun exposure that you had prior to you being diligent is now all coming to the surface. But it's okay, there are ways to get rid of it. Another thing that was happening is that my skin was very sallow. It was very dull, lackluster, and it looked almost graying like I was sick. And a lot of the reason that that was happening was like, I kind of was. So the problem with my skin right now is one, I'm throwing a lot of different hormones at it because I'm doing IVF cycles. I have estrogen patches on my stomach right now. So I'm throwing a lot of hormones at myself at the moment. Another thing, I have an autoimmune disorder called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And when you have Hashimoto's, that basically affects every single cell in your body. So everything from say eczema 
to constipation, to sleeplessness, to anxiety, to infertility, you name it, it, it does it. Uh, it is a bitch of a condition and it will pretty much throw everything, including the kitchen sink, directly at your face and um, says, okay, new thing, deal with it. So I have all of these things that I'm currently dealing with and I'm having to troubleshoot. So I finally found a kind of groove and found a way to combat a lot of these things. Finally, finally, luckily. All right, if you made it this far, let's get started on the skincare routine. So this is sunscreen. Sunscreen is actually my last step in my daily process, but it should be mentioned first and foremost because I feel like it's the most vitally important out of all the steps. So the one that I use is especially for the face. You notice there are sunscreens for the face and for the body. You wanna make sure the one on your face is for the face because the ones that you tend to use on the body, they're a lot thinner, like more runny. They can run in your eyes, they can cause irritation, but they're also comedogenic, which means they could break you out. This one on the other hand does not. So this one is CeraVe Hydrating Mineral Sunscreen, broad spectrum SPF 50 for the face. And you can see, a little dirty. The reason it's dirty is this is the one that lives in my makeup kit and I have another one that lives in my bag that comes with me at all times. This has always been my go-to sunscreen and one of the reasons that I really like it is it contains ceramides and niacinamide. So if you're dealing with dehydrated skin, the thing about ceramides is it plays a vital role in preventing transepidermal water loss, which is essentially what happens when your skin doesn't hold on to water. Now it can't fully prevent it, but it can surely slow that process. So it helps your skin in barrier function and it also helps with controlling that transepidermal water loss, which causes dehydrated skin. So if you're dehydrated, this is gonna help hold on to it. And then it has niacinamide. Niacinamide is something that's also very important for barrier function, but it also helps protect your skin, especially if you're using things like retinols or vitamin C or anything that's harsh on the skin. It's both soothing and it also helps repair. So what you're gonna find with niacinamide is it's gonna help with the overall texture and kind of smoothness of your skin, but it also helps with things like hyperpigmentation. So I like the fact that this is not only a sunscreen, but it also contains vital skincare that's gonna help me throughout the day, especially since this is going to sit on my skin under my makeup. So this is a very good sunscreen. My first step in the process will always be the double cleanse. Oil cleanse first. I always thought that this was kind of a fad, the whole concept of double cleansing, because you see fads all the time when it comes to skincare. Things come in and they're out just as fast as they came in because they were crap and they didn't work and it was just, you know, whatever. But the oil cleanse is such a vital step in the routine and I'm gonna explain why, hear me out. I know it seems excessive to wash your face twice. You're going outside, you're getting pollution, you're getting pollen, you got sunscreen on your face, you're putting makeup on and you're coming home and then you're washing your face with your regular cleanser. The problem is the cleanser is really designed to cleanse your skin and it's not really cleansing your skin when it has all that other crap it needs to bust through to get to in the first place. So you're not really fully cleansing your skin. That's where the oil cleanse comes in. So what you'll find after you do the oil cleanse, really rinse it off well, and you go in with this, your face is gonna feel so much cleaner. Because normally, if you were just going in with the one cleanse, it's gonna break through all of that other stuff just to hit skin, so you're kind of getting that minimally invasive clean. Whereas this stuff, now you're getting all the benefits of the ingredients and you're really deep cleaning your actual skin. So you will notice a difference almost immediately if you do the oil cleanse, especially if your makeup looks like this and you're not double cleansing, I can almost guarantee that your skin is not getting clean. Let me explain. Do you ever do your makeup, wash your face at night before bed, and then when you wake up in the morning, suddenly your pillow tells the tale of a face that suddenly regurgitated every last bit of makeup that you had no idea that was on your face? That is because you're not double cleansing. And the whole point of a double cleanser is to go in first with your oil cleanse before your regular cleanser because this stuff, this is what's gonna break up all of this. It goes in and it gets all that superficial dirt off your face. Pollution from the day, sunscreen, foundation, eye makeup, and it breaks all of that up so that it can actually be washed off your face. You're gonna do two to three pumps in the hand and then massage, 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 get in your eyes. Watch that eye makeup just start to melt away and really work at your eyelashes. Get that mascara till it disintegrates between your fingertips into little black boogers. And then you're gonna apply the water and then as you start to emulsify it, here's where the magic happens. You're gonna have a sink as black as your soul. You might need to do this twice. However, when you go in with your regular cleanser, watch how clean your face feels. I can guarantee it has never felt so naked in years. So the next step in the process I like to use is a toner. The one I'm currently using is Pyongyang Yul. 
and it is actually an essence toner, which is two things in one. And the reason that we like to use toners is toner is gonna help set your pH. Your skin sits at a natural 5.5. And what happens is if you're unbalanced in any way, so you're more alkali, you're more acidic, your skin's not gonna be really receptive to the whole process of skincare. Plus, when your balance is thrown off like that, your skin likes to do all kinds of fun and interesting things like doing its best impression of the Sahara Desert or completely acneic. So you wanna keep that dead center, 5.5, as much as humanly possible. So when your face is all nice and toned, your pH is all set, it's also gonna suck in all of the nutrients from all the products that you're using after that. As this is an essence toner, it has the essence component to things, which means that it has more highly concentrated ingredients that for me is gonna focus on things like moisture and hydration. Uh, with this particular one, I haven't really noticed much in the way of being hydrating, but it certainly works well as a toner. But I don't find this one particularly hydrating. I don't know if it's just me, but this is certainly one that I have been messing around with, so I'm not sure on this one. But it definitely works well as a toner. After toning, I like to go in right away with something very hydrating. So I go in with my Hado Labo. I don't know if I'm gonna pronounce this properly, but Gokujin Premium Lotion. And I know when you hear lotion, you probably don't expect something that looks like this. It is, um, I'm gonna show you the consistency. A little bit more like a serum, but maybe a little bit more watery, but it's very silky. And it applies like a lot of hydration. I don't wanna waste any. <laughs> it applies a lot of hydration which is something that is very, very obviously important to somebody who has dehydrated skin. So I find things like this a lot more effective when it comes to dehydrated skin, when it comes in more of this form, when it has more of a liquid carrier as opposed to like a thicker cream or moisturizer base when you're dehydrated. And it makes sense if you think about it because like I said, with dehydrated skin, your skin is craving water, but when you have dry skin, it craves things that are thicker, like fats, like moisturizers and creams and things like that. So when you're applying something like this, you're also applying something that it's very first ingredient is gonna be water. So when I find things that are water-based, it tends to really hydrate a lot faster and just be more effective. I've been using this for, I wanna say about six or seven months and it's definitely something that's gonna stay in my routine. I, I like it. So, so far so good. Next step, and this is something that I wouldn't use all the time. Some people like to use ampules all the time, but I find that it's usually because it's a high concentration of a very specific ingredient, that you use it for when you need it. And with myself, it's because I was feeling very dry, dehydrated, and my skin was feeling very sensitive and irritated. This ampule in particular is Centella. And Centella is actually, it's a really good ingredient. It's been used for many years, but I've only been seeing it recently come up in skincare. And it's, sole purpose is really for inflammation, for like kind of sensitive, inflamed skin. It's really meant to calm and soothe that. And I found that it really does do that. And I think it's been really important with repairing my skin for whatever nightmare it was currently going through. It's done the job. So I'm very happy with that. But I'm kind of running a little bit low because I think I used it probably more than I should have because you don't want to use it that much. Some people, again, they like to use ampules a lot more often because it's ampules contain a high concentration of specific ingredients. But for me, I kind of, I think too much can be a little bit of an overkill and I don't want my skin to get too used to it. So say for example, my skin decides to act up again and I go to use it, it's like, no, been there, done that, what else you got? So I want something that's gonna kind of continue to work for me when I need it. After that, I like to use a serum and at the moment, I'm currently using niacinamide, 10%. So I usually stick with hyaluronic acid. I do go between. So like each day, I'll do something different. I'll either do the hyaluronic acid or I'll do the buffet or I will do the niacinamide. So this time around, I'm using the niacinamide 10%. The hyaluronic I ran out of, but the reason that I use hyaluronic is because of how hydrating it is. It holds a thousand times its weight in water, so it really helps pull moisture in the skin and keep it there. So usually when I use the hyaluronic, what I like to do is I like to dab some water on my, both my hands and press it through with the water. Um, preference, kind of my own personal thing, but I find that it really helps kind of absorb it a lot better. What I like about the niacinamide is that it nourishes, it protects, and it also makes your skin a lot stronger because it helps build things like keratin. And when you're kind of doing all the other things, such as say you're using retinols or anything stronger, like say vitamin C or ascorbic acid, that kind of thing, this is gonna help strengthen your skin barrier. So it's very important when you're trying to really build your skin health. So I really do, I like the niacinamide. So I've been using this. In that order, by the way, that's the order that I use everything. I also alternate with the Alpha Arbutin 
And what this does is it really helps even out your skin tone when it comes to things like pigmentation. If you want a nice solid skin tone, just like one color, this is your deal. It's gonna be a skin brightener, which is very important. A lot of people ask me, oh, what can I do to lighten my skin? What are good skin lighteners? I do not know any safe skin lightening things, but I do know skin brighteners. And I think it's better to have brighter skin than lighter skin because you want your skin to glow. You want it to be bright and healthy. So I would recommend go for skin brighteners, not lighteners. This is the final step that I tend to use in the process unless I'm doing other things. It is Turter Milk Skin Toner. It is so hydrating. You don't need a lot. And what it does, and this is like my favorite thing ever, is that it's providing moisture and hydration to your skin, not using thick and heavy creams. It's using water as a carrier as opposed to creams. And I love that because it just, your skin just seems to drink it right in. And right at the end, as you just, I, I pat this into the skin. You start by patting, pat, pat, pat. And then if you wanna do another layer, then you can kind of massage a little bit after. It is so hydrating. You will wake up and your skin looks like a disco ball. I love it. So what comes after this is gonna determine whether or not it's my day or night routine. So if it's my day routine, sunscreen comes next, and then obviously whatever makeup I'm wearing for the day. If it's my night routine, I'm either gonna be using, I love these sheet masks, they're by Tony Molly, and they make a whole bunch of different ones. And I'm still trying to figure out which ones I like the best, but I like to change it up. This one's the purifying, I'm Cactus. The green tea one is actually really good as well. There's a whole bunch of different ones. I'll leave the links in the description. This is my last one. I wish I had more to show you, but this one's my last one. Uh, there are a whole bunch of different ones. There's the purifying one. There's the clarifying one. There's the hydrating one. I think the hydrating one is probably my favorite, but these are all really great. They're the sheet masks and you just let them sit on your skin. I love them. Exfoliation is a really important process in my skincare routine. And I think it's a vital importance for a lot of other people as well, if you incorporate it well. Everybody's different when it comes to how well you tolerate things like exfoliation. As for myself, it's something that I only do once to twice weekly, and I use both chemical and I also use mechanical exfoliation. And so many people are like vehemently against mechanical exfoliation because they're like, ah, micro tears, it rips your skin apart. Yes and no, it really depends. If you're talking about like say St. Ives, if you look at St. Ives, like the actual bits that they use to exfoliate your skin under a microscope, it's peach pit and walnut shell. And those are little sharp shards. And what that does is when you cause these little micro tears, it allows things like bacteria to get in. Bacteria, microbes, which can cause things like infection. It can cause things like acne. However, that's not for everybody. There are people that have been using St. Ives for years and they're perfectly fine with it. But I rather not take the risk. When it comes to mechanical exfoliation, what I like to use is very simple. I like to use about a pump or two of my oil cleanse, about a teaspoon of regular sugar, just straight, regular white sugar. And I'm sure a lot of you are probably thinking, well, surely that's just the same as using the St. Ives. Aren't sugar crystals just as sharp? Again, yes and no. So what happens when we apply heat to sugar? Sugar turns to syrup. So what's gonna happen is when you're applying the warmth of your hands and the warmth of your face, and of course the warmth of the water, never use hot water, because again, it will turn to syrup. When you're applying that warmth, you're taking whatever sharp edges are there and you're immediately buffering on contact. So these crystals are becoming buffered the second they touch your skin. What I like about this is that on top of its ability to naturally exfoliate, sugar is also a natural humectant, which draws moisture in and helps hold it there. So while you're sloughing away all this dead surface skin, it's leaving a natural glow in its place that's helping hydrate your skin. So I find that it's really good if you're actually like, say you have to go out somewhere, you're having like, or you're gonna be photographed in any way, and you want your makeup to apply really cleanly and evenly, I find that using that right beforehand works really well. I alternate between two different chemical exfoliants. There's definitely one that's my all-time favorite, but it's good to change things up a little bit. The first one that I use is the Ordinary Lactic Acid plus HA. And what you do is you apply a couple drops to your hand, pat it into your skin. And something that I think is really important is to invest in a good peel neutralizer, which you can find in spray form. And a lot of peels, they say don't need to be neutralized. And a lot of the Ordinaries don't but I would recommend just going on to like say Amazon and looking for a good spray neutralizer just to have on hand because if it starts to burn, it feels a little bit uncomfortable. They don't provide a neutralizer for you, but it's good to have that on hand just in case because it's always better to be safe than sorry. So keep a neutralizer on you if you're gonna kind of mess around with any peels. And the other peel that I use is a Dr. Dennis Gross Alpha Beta Peel Pads. These ones are in extra strength. I've been using these peel pads for years and every single person that I've recommended them to 
different age groups, different skin types, different skin conditions, and every single one of them, they now swear by these. And I like to keep things a little bit more frugal when it comes to skincare. So when it comes to a lot of the things that I really like, if they're not already inexpensive, I try to look for things that are even less expensive so it doesn't break the bank. Because I have to be more cognizant of finances, hence the fact that rather than have the turbo box that I usually have, I only have the five pack. So when it comes to these, they are a little bit pricey, but I've not been able to find a dupe in any way comparable to these because of how well they work. It's the one thing that is very pricey in my routine that I won't swap out. So the way these work are really simple. Step one and step two are exactly the same. They're both little wet wipes that are inside. They're little squares you open up. They look like baby wipes and you do step one, you wipe your face, your neck, your decollete. So you wanna make sure with all of your skincare in fact, you wanna make sure what you're doing to your face, you do to your neck and your decollete because you want all of these things to match. I cannot tell you how many times on my treatment table I've gotten a client whose skin is amazing on their face but their neck and chest is covered in like hyperpigmentation and it looks about 20 years older than their face does. And that's because they're not applying any of their skincare or sunscreens that they're applying to their face, to their neck and decollete. So we all want these things to match. So especially when you're doing things like peels, do it to your neck, do it to your chest. So you're gonna wipe your face, neck and decollete with the peel pad, number one. And then you're gonna let that sit on your skin. Really get it good and saturated until the wet wipe feels almost dry. And then you're gonna let it sit on your skin for maybe two to three minutes. And then after that, you're gonna hit it with step two. Same thing, little wet wipe, open it up. You're gonna wipe your face, neck, and decollete, and that's gonna neutralize it. But what that neutralizer has as an extra added party bonus is it's got that retinol in it. So what step one is doing is it's not only addressing things like fine lines, hyperpigmentation, and your overall skin texture, what it's also doing is it's stopping with the production of things like comedones and unclogging pores, which is why it's so great for people with acne. Now step two, the anti-aging neutralizer, it's got the retinol in it. And retinol is like that heavy hitter when it comes to things like, again, hyperpigmentation and fine lines. And it does work with some wrinkles, but anything that are really deep, those are things you have to kind of get cosmetically addressed. But when it comes to more like fine lines, retinol is something that you definitely want on your side, but it also helps with tightening and toning. So these are just all around amazing. So this is a new face device and I've only very recently started using this even though I've had it since 2021 and the reason that I've only recently started using it is because I was terrified of it. Even though I understand the technology behind it, I know the history of it and I've used it on many clients in the past before. Not this particular device, this is mine, but the ones that were used in my treatment rooms, but I've always just been afraid of it. You know, trauma at its finest, we suspect everything. But the whole concept behind this is it uses microcurrent technology. And what microcurrent is, it was actually something that was developed medically and it was developed to help people suffering from facial paralysis by way of Bell's palsy. So what it did was help reanimate those muscles by way of using microcurrents, which were meant to mimic your own electrical currents that you produce in your body naturally. After much success, it became FDA approved and here we are 40 years later and we currently have this technology used in hospitals in our medicine cabinets, which is where mine lives anyway. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you found this video useful and helpful. As always, I'm gonna put the links to everything in the description to help you find all of the products. And if you have any questions, shoot them my way and I will do my best to help. Thanks so much for watching everybody. Bye.